church and the community should be there to meet the needs of the community. Not only did Reverend Castle have a vision, but he had the determination to act on God's ordained vision. Through his foresight, faith in God, and spiritual inspiration, Friendship West Baptist Church became a reality. On the second Sunday in June of 1976, a total of nine worshipers had the inaugural worship service at the Mary Louis Sweat School of Dance on Liberty Lane. It's a crazy story that blows my mind. Every time I think about how Frederick Haynes and Friendship West came together, 1975, the year before the birth of Friendship West, my dad asked me as I was graduating from my middle school, junior high school, we called it then, would I join him in a road trip from San Francisco to Dallas? That meant I had to miss the trip to Disneyland with my class, graduation, all that stuff, but it was with my dad. And so I took the road trip with him. And we drove from San Francisco, or he drove from San Francisco to Dallas with a stop on the way uh, from my sister's graduation and in Southern California. And so we got to Dallas. We get to Dallas, and Reverend Robert L. Castle, who went to school with my dad, evidently at Bishop College, he wants to take us out to eat. And so we go out to eat, and I'm 14 years old, not really paying attention, but I recall him talking about, uh, I'm going to start my own church. And that really tripped me out, like, you know, how do you start your own church? I am a member of Third Baptist, which is, you know, in excess of 100 years old, so I'm tripping. Why are you starting a church? I, I don't know anything about that, but I remember in that conversation between Reverend Castle and my dad that he's, you know, talking about starting a church, his vision and all that stuff. And as a 14-year-old, I'm like, I don't see how that's going to happen. The next time I see Reverend Castle is three months later when my dad passes and he and his wife come to the funeral. And, you know, I remember him greeting me. We joined the first year, 1976. Oh, uh, my sister passed that little A-frame church on Polk and told us, I saw black people coming out of that building. <laughs> so we were amazed. And that week, our founding pastor, Reverend Robert L. Castle, knocked on my door, inviting us to church. I said, oh, no, I have a small child, not yet two years old, and he's not adjusted, so we don't go to church anymore. He said, that's okay. That's what my church is mostly just children. If he talks too much, we'll tell him to shut up. <laughs> if he moves around, we'll tell him to sit down. I said, if you're sure that's okay, we'll be there. And the next Sunday we went and joined. So, of course, three years later, I'm at Bishop College and start preaching a year after that. And interestingly, one of the things that, again, blows my mind in the back story is that I was scheduled to preach for an MLK service in Beaumont, Texas. in the sanctuary that's right that's right give God praise in the sanctuary come on lift up your voice lift up your head O ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors what is God's promise and the king of glory shall come in listen as we're getting ready to celebrate the end of one year and the entrance of another we owe God a praise our best praise Come on, from the depths of our spirit, somebody can testify, 2023, I had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. I've had some sleepless nights. But when I look around, when I stop 
and really think things over. My testimony is all of my good days outweighed every last one of my difficult, bad days. And my declaration is not only will I not complain, but I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I hope if you're watching us online that you can hear the certain sound of praise that is in the sanctuary, the certain sound of worship that is going forth on tonight. If you're joining us online, do us a favor, hit that like button, hit share button, get into the spirit of digital evangelism, spread this word and this worship because you know it's going to be some hot worship here tonight. Spread this word and this worship so that someone somewhere can get what God has for them. Let the church say amen. Y'all go ahead and sit down real quick, and then we're going to, I'm going to have you rest on your feet in a little bit as we usher in, amen, a spirit of worship through uh, a posture of prayer. But I want to begin tonight with the instructions I've been given, and I want to begin uh, by giving us just a little bit of understanding of what we come to celebrate tonight. Again, if you remember, we'll be uh, together at 11 o'clock p.m. for one hour of power as we usher in the new year with prayer and with worship and with a meditation for our senior pastor. But every instance of worship on this day is designed to remind us of not only what God has done for us in 2023, but remind us of all of the ways that God has kept us throughout our history. As we come to celebrate Watch Night, we, we got to remember what it is that we celebrate, that what? On December 31st, 1862, black, feet, black folk, enslaved people gathered throughout the country in their churches in their religious communities as they awaited word of freedom's coming. They called the worship, they called their time together watch night or freedom's eve as they believed that, that Abraham Lincoln would do what he promised and sign an emancipation proclamation that would, as a war measure, set free the slaves who were in the Confederate territories, again, as a war measure, not to liberate the slaves, but to, the, to, but to preserve the union. And I believe that as those black folk gathered in those churches, as they prayed, as they expected, they were praying not just for their liberation, but for the liberation of the country. That the country would live up to its high ideals, to its great principles, to its great promise. And we come tonight to pray not only for God's blessing over a new year, but as we pray tonight and as we pray at 11 o'clock, we continue to pray because we know that the work of emancipation is work that is still undone. It is work that goes on. It is work that it is all of our responsibility to what? To march on, to fight on, to struggle on, to work on undone until freedom and liberty belongs to every child of God in this country and across the world. So I want you to understand the solemnness with which we enter tonight. But I want you to understand, Watch Night is not just about our enslavement, it's also about our victory. Because before December 31st, 1862, or January 1st, 1863, January 1st, 1804, black folk in Haiti liberated themselves and abolished slavery and declared themselves to be liberated, amen, from their European colonizers. All I want you to know tonight is as we come to celebrate and to walk into a new year, we walk into that year with great expectation of God's victory. And that's all I want to argue tonight. That's all I want to offer you tonight. That's all I want you to get your mind settled on. That's what I want you to grab a hold of as we pray and as we worship is the victory that God has promised you. The victory that God said belongs to you shall be had. And I just need about two or three who can give God a praise, who can give God a shout with expectation that victory shall be mine. That victory belongs to me. Victory belongs to my household. Victory belongs to my children. Victory in my finances. Victory in my family life. Victory in my physical health. I wish I had about 10 or 12 who could just give God a praise that eye has not seen, that ear has not heard, that the clock has not struck midnight yet, but I'm believing God for victories that eye has not seen, that ear has not heard, that it hadn't even entered into the heart of men and women, the good things, the great things, the blessed things, the uh, 
anointed things that God has prepared for you and me because we love him. And you ought to just give God a worship tonight all over the sanctuary with great expectation, with a heart of praise, with a heart of worship, with a heart of thanksgiving. Why? Because I believe in God for victory. And that's the word that we rest on tonight. We believe God for victory. Wherever you are across this sanctuary, I would that you would just rest on your feet. Rest on your feet. Stand. Uh, if you can't stand, expect a miracle. Amen. We're praying for you that you will be able to stand. Amen. If you, uh, but, but grab the hand of someone. If you're, if you're comfortable, if you're comfortable, I don't want to put anybody in an uncomfortable position, but if you're comfortable enough, grab the hand of someone standing next to you. Leave no person untouched and just begin to pray out loud for the hand that you hold and fill this sanctuary with a sound of prayer as we ask God's blessing upon our gathering here this night. We know that God is already here, that he's already here, that he's everywhere there and here, that he's here tonight, but he's also there where you need him to be. So he's here tonight, but he's there in that hospital room. He's here with us tonight, but he's there in the jail cell. He's here with us tonight, but he's there He's there with that person who's struggling and dealing that you've been praying for all year long. He's, he's here with us tonight, but he's already everywhere that you need him to be, already working it out, already fixing it, already making it uh, perfect, uh, perfected according to his will and his way and his plan for your life. You ought to just give God worship wherever you are as we fill this house with a sound of prayer. Lord, in your name, we believe you for good things, and so we come tonight and we want you to know that we have come back because we need another portion of your word we we need a double portion of your anointing we we need more of your word we we need more of your direction we need more of your instruction we need you to speak again concerning our lives and concerning our situation and we give you thanks and praise God because we know that the battle is not ours but that the battle belongs to you and so we leave it in 2023 everything we want to worry about complain about what we could stress about what we could allow to keep us up all night we're going to leave it on the altar in 2023 and we're going to walk forward with our hands lifted up we're going to walk forward with our head up with our back straight with our heart fixed and confident that the thing that God has begun in us he will work it he will fix it. He will continue making it happen until the day of completion. And so we give you praise, God, even though what we need might be incomplete. Lord, we don't see it all yet. Lord, we don't have it all yet. But we believe that you're working something out for our good. And so in the sanctuary, we give you worship. In the sanctuary, we give you the praise. We ain't even seen it yet, but we believe in by the time we get home tonight that 12 o'clock midnight we're going to see it change we're going to see it heal we're going to see it delivered we're going to see our child saved we're going to see our life transformed and we believe it to be so in the name of Jesus that's all we got Lord the name of Jesus in a world of bombs and war we call on the name of Jesus and we plead the blood the blood over our homes, the blood over our children, the blood over their schools. We plead the blood and we believe you for the promises of your word. For you were wounded for our transgression and you were bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon you and by your stripes we can claim and walk in healing. We leave in 2023 with it's depression and it's sickness and it's illness and it's infirmity and we walk in the promises that God says that we can have for the promises of God are yea and amen and you're not a man that you should lie nor the son of man that you should repent and 
So with our hands lifted up and our mouth went filled with praise, we bless you, God. We honor you, God. We shabak you, Lord. We send up Judah. We send up praise. And as the praises go up, we feel strength coming down. As worship goes up, we feel confidence coming down. As our hands go up, we feel the power of God rest upon our life. And we trust you. I said we trust you. Even when we can't trace you, we believe you. Even when we feel like giving up, we go believe what your word says. We go believe the promises that you made to us. And we bless you. And we bless you. And we bless you. And we bless you. And we honor you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We say thank you that you kept us, that you helped us, that you protected us from dangers seen and unseen. You provided for us because it all belongs to you. And since all of the cows, because all of the cows and the horses and the silver and the gold, because it all belongs to you. All of the glory, all of the honor, all of the praise, we're going to give it to you as well, because you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. If we look back over this year, we wouldn't have enough to testify to your goodness, but why? We got a chance. We want to bless you. We want to thank you. We want to praise you because you're worthy. And so we say yes. We say thank you. We say hallelujah. We say we will. We say yes, Lord. Whatever you want, we're going to do. Wherever you need us, we're going to go. However you need it is how we're going to show up. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. And the people of God opened up their mouth and gave God praise in the sanctuary. I said open up your mouth. Oh, bless him. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endures to all generations. Shout yes, shout yes. Come on, bless Him, 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 bless Him. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all. But all that is within me, bless his holy name. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, his name, his name is worthy to be praised. I don't know about you, but if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I don't know where. Jesus in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank y'all for indulging me. But if you knew what I knew, hey, if you've been through what I've been through, you'd understand why we've got to praise him while we've got a chance. Come on and give God praise here in the house of the Lord. Come on, he's worthy, worthy, worthy. Worthy to be praised. 
worthy to be praised. We are so delighted tonight. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're so excited. I don't know about you. I'm excited. I just can't hide it because God has been that kind of good to me. Amen. Said I wasn't going to tell nobody what the Lord has done for me. We are so excited, amen, tonight as we prepare the ground to hear again from our pastor. Grab your Bibles. For those of you who are watching us online, grab your word because there is a word from the Lord. There's also going to be an opportunity for you to sow, amen, into the work of this awesome ministry. But as we come tonight, we're delighted to be joined by one of Dallas's very best, one of Dallas's very best. He's a gospel musician, a record producer, a singer, songwriter, a music director, a vocalist, a musician, most notably known as the leader of the gospel choir, Myron Butler and Levi. Since 1997, that's right, that's right. Since 1997, he's worked as a vocal director and contributor for several notable projects and artists, including the work of Yolanda Adams, Donald Lawrence, Smokey Norfolk, Bishop Marvin Sapp, and Kirk Franklin. You all helped me to celebrate and welcome back to Friendship West one more time, the incomparable Myron Butler. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Is there anybody that's glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Oh, no, don't fool me. I said, is there anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? There are many people that started out the year that didn't make it to this day. Is there anybody that's thankful for life, breath, health, and strength? Let me hear you in this place. To the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the I am that I am. Come on, is there anybody excited that God is still on the throne? Nobody compares to him. He's still got all power in his hands. He still is a keeper of his word. And I am just so thankful. I'm so thankful. I'm just a country boy that loves the Lord. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. We're going to stand up in a little bit. Oh, I, I, I just have to say I am just like, Dr. Haynes, you've been a hero a hero for so many years for me. I'm talking back, back, back on Keith. <laughs> and this church, uh, and, and, and First Lady Haynes, thank you so much uh, for always just, just being prime examples of what godliness looks like. And uh, I am just so thankful that even though we live in the midst of turbulent times, that none of this took God by surprise. Do I have any witnesses in the room tonight? There's so much going on in this world, but it didn't take God by surprise. And I have made up my mind long time ago, Lord, I'm going to give you everything that I have. Why? Because he gave me his all. And I love him. Anybody else in the room love him tonight? All right, I just need about, just about 10 people to stand up on your, on your feet. We're going to start with a simple song. Just, just 10 people. I know some people got those shoes. They have a time limit on them. I grew up listening to all types of music, influenced by it all, because everything created comes from God. Amen? Amen? But I just want you to utter these words. Shout, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, let's go. Clap those hands. Turn the computer up a little bit. The tracks up a little bit. There you go. Uh oh. I know you like that. Everybody, just group. There you go. You can rock from side to side. There you go. A little louder in the house. We can all sing this together. Everybody in the room, say this. Lord, I love you. 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 More than anything. More than anything. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord.
Everybody just clap those hands. Clap, clap. Yeah. There you go. Bishop, can we sing it together this time? Everybody say, Lord, I praise you. I lift my hands and praise you. Lord, I praise you more than anything. I love you, Lord. Yep, yep. Uh huh. Yep. I love you, Lord.
praise in this room. That's an applause. Somebody give him praise. Open up your mouth to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the glory, all the honor because you've been good to us. And I made up my mind that I'm going to give God everything. I'm going to bless him because he continuously blesses me. The song says, morning by morning by morning by morning, new what? New mercies that I didn't earn, that I don't deserve, but yet and still he gives them to me because he loves me. That's why I say, Lord, I'm going to bless you. Next song simply says, Father, we bless your name. Come on, let's go. There you go. Clap with us. Pray. 
praise. Sherrod, go to A flat. I heard my brother praying earlier. He can pray. <laughs> you know people that know the Lord. They ain't got to wear a t-shirt. They ain't got to announce it. When they open up their mouth, you know that they've spent time with God. One thing that rang out to me in his prayer, he says that I've learned to stay in a position of always blessing the Lord. The word of the Lord says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. With just a little bit. Oh, okay. With all that is within me, I will bless his name. Whether I'm on the mountain or whether I'm in the valley, I'm going to bless him. Psalm simply says, bless the Lord. Yes, Lord. Right. 
precious. And he's worthy. You know, serving the Lord, you can't do it passively. It's intentional. Because some days life is going to throw everything it can at you. But you've got to stand flat-footed on the promises of God and know that God can't lie. So even though you can't see it, even though you don't feel it, you've got to make up in your mind to give God everything that you have. I want us to just sing this declaration in the room tonight. Everybody, under the sound of my voice, say, shh, shh, shh. Say, I'll bless your name. Say that. I'll bless your name. Say, I'll bless your name. Say that. I'll bless your name. On your bad days, you got to say it a little louder. Say, I'll bless your name. Say Say, I'll bless your name. I'll bless your Look more, Sherrod. Jesus, 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 there's something Come on. about that name. Oh, 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 he is Master, Savior, Jesus. <laughs> like the fragrance after the rain. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, let all heaven and earth. King 
Something, but there's something, but there's something uh, about. I'm sorry, I'm gonna take all my time here. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its words. Oh, Sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name oh, on earth. Oh, this is only for those that love him. Oh. Give me the beat, Sarah. Oh, how I love Jesus as a choir. Oh, how I, I love him. Why? Let me hear you in the room tonight. Praise God with me for the incredibly gifted Myron Butler. What a ministry, what a gift to the body of Christ. Praise God for God being good. Matter of fact, praise God for Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Why you got to praise God that if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side, where would we be? Here we are on the last day of 2023 getting ready for more in 24 won't you praise god first of all look in the rear view mirror and thank god that god has brought you through many dangers toils and snares while you're at it thank god not just for what you've been through but for what you are about to go to come on let's give god praise hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. You've kept us. You've blessed us. 
You've never left us. Amen. And for that, we give you thanks and praise. And now, God, we thank you that you have brought us on purpose to the very end of one year, ready to write the chapter in the new year. And God, we dare not write this chapter without you. And so we thank you for bringing us, and now we need you to speak to us about what's next. And so speak, Lord. We are listening. I'm available to be used as your instrument, so stand in my body, take over my mind, and think your thoughts. Take my mouth and speak with power your word, and I bless your word. Give such power to your word that none of us leave this encounter, this experience, the same way we came. Speak to us, for we are listening in Jesus' name. Amen. And hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Praise God with me for Myron Butler and his amazing ministry, what gifts they are, and how we praise God for being so good. I want to call your attention uh, this evening to a passage of Scripture found in the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 2. And there in the second chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, Beginning at verse 1, we find these words from the Message Translation by Eugene Peterson. It reads, Then we turned around and went back into the wilderness, following the route to the Red Sea. As God had instructed me, we worked our way in and around the hills of Seir for a long, long time. Then God said, you've been going around in circles in these hills long enough. Go north. You may be seated in God's presence. I want to put a tag on this text. In these few moments, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach, breaking the bar, breaking the cycle, and raising the bar. Breaking the cycle and raising the bar. Friends of Distinction are a group you're too young to know anything about. But they sang back in the day an old school song, You Got Me Going in Circles. Round and round I go. I'm spun out over you. Listen, I'm an ever rolling wheel without a destination real. I'm an ever spinning top whirling around till I drop. Oh, but what am I to do? My mind is in a whirlpool. Give me a little hope, one small thing to cling to. You got me going in circles. Oh, round and round I go. I'm spun out over you. Now, let me be real. If that's love, I don't want it. Because to be so caught up in someone else that you lose yourself ain't love. It's setting the stage for you to play the fool. And yet, look at the dysfunctional relationship that these outstanding gifted brothers sonorously sing about. They're talking about a relationship that has them going in circles, so much so that they have no real sense of direction and destination themselves. Don't forget the line that's lamentable and luminous when they simply say, I'm an ever spinning top whirling around till I drop. But before that, I'm an ever rolling wheel without a destination real. Check it out. No real direction for themselves because they're going wherever the person they're with is taking them now. Y'all judging them, but some of you can look back at your own relationship 
relationships that you are either in or have been in. And if you're not careful, you can get so caught up in someone else that you end up losing yourself. You lose your ability to dream because you were caught up in their dream. You lose your sense of destination because you have no sense of destiny other than what they say. But what really gets me is the line that talks about, watch this, oh, but what am I to do? My mind is in a whirlpool. That's why I want to hang out right now because whirlpools are dangerous. Have you seen a whirlpool? I'm not talking about a bath in your home. I'm talking about a whirlpool, my sisters and brothers, a whirlpool that spins and sucks in objects and people to the point where as it is spinning, one can literally get trapped in the whirlpool and before you know it, you are going around and around in circles. Don't miss it. Going around in circles, meaning that you're going where you've been, doing what you've done, going around in circles where you see what you've seen because you're going where you've been. You're going around in circles, but here is the danger of a whirlpool. A whirlpool will suck you in in order to take you down. A whirlpool, watch this, will have you the captive of a circle that is designed to take you down. I'm not coming through. I'll make it real plain. I read this week the story of an Englishman who testified that he had looked forward to for many years going to Zambia because he had heard about the white water rafting there on the mother continent. This Englishman goes with the group. Ten years ago, he testifies to Zambia. They land in Zimbabwe, make the trip over to Zambia, and when they arrive in Zambia, they are greeted with one who is going to be their tour guide. As a consequence, he feels no fear because he trusts the tour guide. However, as soon as they embark on the white water raft, they find themselves caught up against a wave, a wave that hit him, but it did not scare him because he was trusting the guide. And then the second wave hit, and when the second wave hit my sisters and brothers, it literally caused the raft they were in to capsize. He was leading or sitting in the front of the raft, and this wave hit. The wave caused the craft to capsize, and then when the wave caused the, cap the craft to capsize, it carried him. He tried to swim in the opposite direction, but that's when he discovered that he was spinning around and around. Watch it. He is caught up in a whirlpool that has sucked him in, and now he's going around and around. Wait, not just going around and around, but the whirlpool is dragging him down. He finds himself now holding up his paddle hoping that someone can see him as water begins to feel his nostrils he feels like he is about to black out he testified that he said at that moment I'm about to die why because he was the captive of a whirlpool he was the captives of something that had sucked him in was spinning him around and now taking him down down. I use that as a metaphor. Why? Because of the fact that oftentimes in life we find ourselves basically repeating on, or we find ourselves on repeat when it comes to our lives. Here we are at the end of 23. For a whole lot of folk, 23 looked a lot like 22. And if you're not careful, you'll get more of the same in 24. In a real sense, your life Life has become a whirlpool where you find yourself like a hamster on a wheel. You are expending energy, but you are going nowhere fast. You are moving. Watch this. There is movement or there is motion, but there is no movement. There is activity or action, 
but you are not moving forward if you're not careful. My sisters and brothers, life can become that whirlpool. Life can become that hamster wheel. If you're not careful, you can find yourself experiencing what we used to see when I was growing up, and that is we call them reruns. Y'all too young to know anything about reruns, but after a season would end, the next thing you know, you were watching reruns, drama that basically had the same story, the same characters doing the same thing that you had already seen. It was called a rerun. Y'all still not getting this thing. Some of our lives are like, here's a good metaphor, broken records. Now, of course, you don't know anything about records, but we had records back in the day, and, and the records, watch this, if they were ever scratched, what would happen is the next thing you know, a scratch record would start repeating the same line repeatedly on repeat. You'd have the same line over and over again. I'm giving you the metaphors because it's my prayer that 24 will not be a repeat of 23, which was a repeat of 22. I'm hoping and praying that you won't get caught up, sucked into a whirlwind that is taking you down as you're spinning around. And if that is your prayer, I want you to look with with me at this powerful passage because the Bible lets us know the people of God, please don't miss your shout right here. They are now on the very border of the land of promise, but as they get to the border of the land of promise, notice that Moses, the legendary lawgiver, leader, and liberating uh, liberator, lover of the nation, Moses, my sisters and brothers, wants to make sure that they've learned lessons from their history. And so Moses invites them to a Sankofa moment, Sankofa from the Akan people, there in Ghana, which speaks of or is illustrated by a bird that is moving forward, but it moves forward by looking backward with an egg in its beak that it is pulled from within itself, knowing its possibilities come from within. But in order to move forward, sometimes you've got to look back, and that's what Moses is doing. Moses does not want them to get to the promised land and then wonder why books are banned about their history. Moses does not want them to get to the promised land and then they discover that there are those who are whitewashing their history because they don't want certain people or certain communities to have their feelings hurt. Moses says, you've got to know your story, your history for yourself. I think I'm going to stop right there because why are you expecting other folks to tell us our history. Why are you expecting other folk to tell us our story? Understand, my sisters and brothers, that we live in a nation that has majored, please don't miss this, in concocting a narrative that is going to always glorify itself, even at the expense of others. Y'all didn't get that. I'll make it plain. There's a wonderful book I've been reading, and the book is entitled Black AF History. I like it. It's by Michael Harriet. Black AF History. Y'all, if you don't know what AF means, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it another time. But the book entitled Black AF History, The Unwhite Washing of America is a powerful book by Michael Harriet. And Michael Harriet basically says in his thesis that America has oftentimes been a story it is told about itself even if the story was not true. It's about watch this, the cherry tree of George Washington and his false teeth. It's about Columbus discovering a land he never set foot in. America, my sisters and brothers, basically is a big lie. It is told itself in order to justify the building of the empire. And in that story, there are 
Negroes who showed up somehow singing old Negro spirituals, and there is no context to that story. According to Michael Harriet, Michael Harriet, my sisters and brothers, then tells the story of America from the underside. He tells the story of America through the eyes of people whose skin has been kissed by nature's son who are in a real sense descendants of a great and noble heritage, heirs to a legacy of dignity. And in telling that story, he tells the story, watch this, of how on the one hand you had one particular character in the state of Louisiana, watch this, and this character whose name escapes me right now, I'll get it to you as soon as I recall it, but this particular character, please don't miss this, found himself coming up with the term called drapetomania, drapetomania, D-R-A-P-E-T-O-M-A-N-I-A. Drapetomania was his understanding, I'm about to shout you, of why black people would dare to escape from enslavement. He said it was a mental disorder whenever black people tried to escape from slavery, it was because they were mentally ill. Y'all didn't get that. It's called a drapetomania. And so drapetomania meant that if you were ever trying to leave the confines of enslavement, if you ever rebelled against the slave owner, if you ever found yourself trying to escape, it's because you had a mental disorder called drapetomania. So so Frederick Douglass had drapetomania. Sojourner Truth had drapetomania. Harriet Tubman had drapetomania. I could call the role of the many Africans who had drapetomania, but in the story, watch this. You know Harriet, you know Sojourner, you know Frederick, but we often are not told about others who had drapetomania. I'm going to read this to you. He writes, the South was surprisingly also a viable option for some slaves who were infected with drapetomania. Their entire communities were built that are still being discovered today, including Bas du Fleuve, a vast area between the mouth of the Mississippi and New Orleans that was controlled by runaways from most of the 1770s. During the colonial period, the all-black town of Fort Mose in the Spanish Florida Territory was a popular destination for those who wanted a permanent vacation from slavery. Spain had abolished slavery in the territory, and after the War of 1812, a fully armed British Negro fort in Florida became the center of the black resistance against the institution of slavery, forming its own army. The British Corps of Colonial Marines was made up of free blacks and fugitive slaves who fought alongside Native Americans to protect the kind runaways who quarantined themselves to protect others from their contagious virus called drapetomania. I guess y'all didn't get that. Did y'all get that in school? I never read that in my school. I never saw that while I was receiving the fact that Abraham Abraham Lincoln never lied and George Washington cut down the cherry tree. I never got all of that. I'm trying to let you know that drapetomania was something that infected Africans who made up their mind and before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my God and be free. I don't know about y'all, but when you know Jesus, you better have some drapetomania because my Bible says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. My Bible says, when the Son has set you free, you are free indeed. I, I'm simply trying to say, if drapetomania is a mental illness, I got it. I'm trying to let somebody know, my sisters and brothers, that Moses is, is saying right here, you need to know your history for yourself. You can't depend on the enemy, on oppressors to 
tell your story to you and for you. You've got to know your own story. You've got to know your own history. And with that being the case, Moses tells them in chapter 1 what had taken place as to why they had found themselves coming to the promised land and then being sentenced to going around in circles. That's what the text says. They end up going back toward the Red Sea. Bible readers are already shouting because the Red Sea is back in the direction that God had delivered them from. If you're not careful, your mind can be so messed up, you will go back to what God set you free from. And that, my sisters and brothers, is where they were going. But hold on. The book says they start going around and around in circles. They are caught up in a whirlpool. They find themselves on that hamster wheel. And then all of a sudden, verse 2, God speaks. And when God speaks, God says, you know what? We're going to break the cycle and raise the bar. I love the text because the text says, God says, you've been circling this hill country long enough. Now it's time for you to go north. Now, y'all didn't shout. You do know north is up. And so when God says, you've been circling this hill country long enough, you've been caught up in the cycle long enough, it's time to break the cycle. And once you break the cycle, you've got to make up your mind that you're going to raise the bar. And that's what I came to preach about tonight because here, 23 has been some kind of year. 22 was some kind of year. Some of us have been still tripping from 20 and COVID and all that went down. And if you are not careful, you can get caught up in a cycle. But here is the good news. This text says God will give you the power to break the cycle. And once you break the cycle, that ain't enough to just break the cycle. That's when you've got to step your game up. That's when you make up your mind to raise the bar. And so that's the word God sent me to share with somebody tonight. And that is whatever cycle you've been caught up in. If it's a relationship cycle, it's if, it's, if it's a cycle that has been brought on by the trauma from your past, if it's a cycle that has caused you to live beneath your possibilities, if it's a cycle that has you going in the same direction that you've been going in. If your life has become one drama rerun, here's the good news. This near, you're going to break the cycle. But not only are you going to break the cycle, you're going to raise the bar. Y'all don't get that. Here's your shout right here. Raise the bar means step your game up. Raise the bar means raise your expectations. Raise the bar means you refuse to settle for what was, you're going to do something that's never been. You're going to raise the bar. And y'all, if I'm by myself, cool in the gang. But I've discovered when you know Jesus for yourself, every day ought to be a raise the bar day. When you walk by faith and not by sight, it means that you made up your mind. I'm going to raise the bar. Paul, help out these folks. Paul puts it like this. I'm going to raise the bar. I'm forgetting what's behind me. And pressing toward the mark and the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. I'm raising the bar. Y'all still didn't shout. Watch my Bible. My Bible says Paul is in prison. And while in prison, Paul says, I'm going to still raise the bar because where I am can't confine who I am. Where I am ain't going to define where I can go. I'm in prison. But look what Paul says in the middle of Ephesians as he comes to the end of chapter 3. Paul says, I'm about to raise the bar now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or imagine according to the power at work within you. Do I talk that fast? Well, y'all not getting your shout on? I'm going to slow my roar and help everybody to get their shout on. Paul is in prison and Paul is writing the Christians at Ephesus and Paul says, I may be in prison, but now under him. Okay. 
All right, now, now him is enough to shout you if you know who him is. I'm talking about him, heart fixer, mind regulator, burden bearer, heavy load sharer, rock in a weary land, bridge over troubled waters, doctor when you're sick, lawyer when you're in trouble. I'm talking about him now under him. Wait, who is able? That didn't get you? God is able to wipe tears from your eyes. God is able to open doors no one can shut. God is able now unto him who is able, wait, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all. You can ask or think. Has God ever done something for you that you didn't ask for? Has God ever done something for you that you never thought about? God says, I'm in the bar raising business. And when I raise the bar, I raise the bar so high, it's exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or imagine. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Okay. I'm going to see if I can help you because maybe I'm in your Kool-Aid. I've called out your flavor and, and, and you're in a relationship cycle. It's time to break the cycle and raise the bar. Maybe, maybe you're tired of going in and out, up and down, round and around, and find yourself making up your mind. You know what? I'm going to break that cycle. I'm going to break that career cycle, that job cycle. I'm tired of this dead-end job. I'm going to break the cycle, and I'm going to raise the bar. If that's you, watch the text. I'm almost done. The text says you can break the cycle and raise the bar. Here's your first shout right here. Text says, watch this, that, that, that the Lord said. Okay, 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 okay. I talk fast, so I'm going to slow my roll. Text says, the Lord said, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, oh, here it is, a divine intervention that breaks the cycle that's been breaking you. The text says, the Lord said, the Lord said, I'm in verse 2, the Lord said after verse 1, when it talks about them going back to the Red Sea, they're going around and around in circles. The text says, and the Lord said, it's a divine intervention. What is an intervention? An intervention takes place when someone decides to interrupt, to interfere with what has been happening that is dysfunctional and dangerous and self-hurting and so they interfere they interrupt and the intervention is sometimes it's 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 disruptive it's something that they did not want to happen but it's an intervention look at the text the text says the intervention is divine because the Lord said wait I'm talking too fast it says the Lord the word there for Lord is Yahweh which was first used they got back in what? Exodus chapter 3. Moses finds himself in a cycle because Moses had been traumatized but by what had taken place 40 years before. The book says Moses had his own people turn on him and when they turned on him, he left where he was and escaped into the desert and for 40 years, the trauma has defined his life. For 40 years, what it happened back then it has defined who he is right now. Who am I talking to? Maybe your name ain't Moses, but something happened back then. And what happened back then has kept you in a cycle of where you are right now. And the text says, Exodus chapter 3, Moses is tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro. And here comes God in a bush that is burning, but not burning up. Wait, God in an unlikely place. Harry Emerson Fosdick looked at this text and called it finding God in unlikely places. Moses does not meet God in a sanctuary. Moses does not meet God in a temple, a synagogue, or a mosque. Mosque God, Moses meets God on the backside of a desert in the midst of his cycle. God shows up. Y'all don't know when to shout. God will meet you in unlikely 
likely places. Wherever you're hurting, God will show up. Wherever you're struggling, God will show up. Wherever dysfunction is dragging you down, God will show up and meet you right there. Look at the text. The text says the bush is on fire, but it ain't burning up. It's on fire, but it's not burning up. God speaks out of the burning bush. Moses, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. And then he gives Moses a calling. Don't miss it. Moses had a job, but not a calling. Moses was working for his father-in-law, Jethro. But Moses didn't have a sense of purpose. Moses didn't have a mission. Moses did not have a calling. And y'all, that's the first step to getting out of your cycle, and that is to recognize the calling that God has placed on your life. And please hear me well. God is so good. God will let your job finance your calling. God is so good that God will put a calling on your life, a purpose on over your life, a plan for your life that's bigger than the job that you're working because God has gifted you and the gifts that God has for you are not simply for you to get paid but for you to live on purpose. Preach, Freddie, I'm doing the best I can. God gives you a calling, places a purpose over your life and then orders your steps and stops according to that purpose, that mission and that calling. And that's what I want to stop and hang out for just a moment. If you want to break the cycle and raise the bar, you've got to stop and ask God, God, what is my life supposed to be about? God, what are you calling me to do? God, it's not just that I was born. I want to know why I was born. I want to know what the plan and purpose is. Is there anybody here who has made up your mind? You know what? I must not settle for anything less less next year. I want more in 24. And to get more in 24, I want to surrender to the call of God on my life. I want to find out why I am here. Not just who I am, but why I am. Why? Why I am. Oh my God. I love this because the text says the Lord spoke the Lord, same Lord who spoke to Moses on the backside of the desert. And when Moses said, all right, uh, now, folk going to ask me what your name is, say your name. God says, I am that I am. Yeah. And so, so watch it. I know what I'm going to say. That's why I'm ready to shout myself. The word said is the same word in Hebrew that was used in Genesis chapter 1 when God, watch this, created the heavens and the earth. And the Bible says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And then the text says, and the Lord said, let there be, and there was. Watch this. What was chaos gave way to cosmos because the Lord spoke. And because the Lord said, all of a sudden, where there was dysfunction, it was replaced by a divine design because when the Lord speaks, God's word is going to always speak into disorder and dysfunction and bring a design and, and bring a design that is divine out of the chaos, the confusion, and the dysfunction. I'm not coming through like I need to. I'm simply trying to let you know if you want to get out of that cycle, maybe you need to hear the Lord speak. And when the Lord begins to speak, God's word has a way of getting in your spirit. And before you know it, God's word will replace dysfunction with the divine design. God's word will replace
replace the chaos with cosmos, God's word will speak. And before you know it, you will see yourself according to how God's word sees you and defines you. Listen, this blessed me a few weeks ago. I'm in Orlando, Florida, and while I'm in Orlando, Florida, Florida, this young cat comes up to me, and the young cat says, you know what, uh, your messages have blessed me, said nice things, and then said this, I've taken your ABCs in one of your sermons, and I have applied it to situations in life. And so I said, what do you mean? He said, he said I've applied your ABCs when you said, A, hey, all things work together for good to those that love God. And called to God according to God's purposes, I put something in front of it showing that God's word is an answer to whatever the situation may be. I said, I'm, I'm still not understanding. He said, all right, watch it. Let me give it to you like this. When you're experiencing adversity, I go with your A. All things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to God's purposes. When you find yourself beset by anxiety, I go with your B, be anxious for nothing but by everything with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God and God's peace that passeth all understanding will, that will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I said, that's pretty good. He said, keep on going. I said, well, what do you go with? Cast your cares on God. He says, that means when life burdens you down to the point it's breaking you, that's when I holler see cast your cares on God because God cares for you I said well what do I do with my desires he said delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart I'm feeling it now he says but sometimes when you get tired you say even the youth shall faint and get weary young folks shall fall but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles run and not get weary walk and not I think, but what about the fact that there are folk who are evil, wrong, and get away with evil and wrong? We're in Florida with a fool like DeSantis and Trump that lives here. He says, well, that's your F. Fret not thyself because of evil doers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, but they shall soon be cut down and wither like the green grass. He goes on to say, and when trouble gets in your way, God is our refuge refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. And when you need a word, hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself when you're having a hard time trusting because you can't trace God in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. When you find yourself looking down on other people, judge not, and you won't get judged. When you find yourself wondering how to deal with your internality. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of the heart flows the issues of life. When life knocks you down, lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. When you don't feel like praising God, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye land, serve the Lord with gladness. When you feel like quitting and turning around no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for God's kingdom every now and then you ought to just say oh give thanks unto the Lord for God is good and sometimes you ought to just say praise the Lord and make sure you quench not the spirit and to do that you got to receive the Holy Ghost and then sometimes when you don't know what to do stand still and see the salvation of the Lord knowing the the Lord is your light and your salvation. Whom shall you fear? The Lord is the strength of your life. Of whom shall you be afraid? I'm trying to let somebody know if you're going to break the cycle and raise the bar, get God's word in your life and experience a divine intervention. Divine intervention. A divine intervention. Wait, I'm not done text says after the divine, the Lord said, watch this, you've been going around in circles long enough. After divine intervention, uh, there's got to be a diagnosis of what's really going on. <laughs> uh, you've been going around in circles 
long enough. Uh, uh, if you don't, watch this, name what has harmed you, you can never be released from it. Okay, that didn't get you. Uh, if you don't name what's really wrong and what's going on, you will find yourself continuing to repeat the same old patterns. And so you've got to have a diagnosis if you're going to have the right prescription in order to alter your prognosis. Okay, all right. I'm going to just get happy all by myself because I just gave y'all some good stuff. A lot of times we don't have an accurate diagnosis. Uh, Jesus is the great physician, and, and he's real good at diagnosing. The Bible lets us know that, that, watch this, he comes to the pool of Bethesda in John chapter 5, and when he gets to the pool of Bethesda, there's a man who's been lame for 38 years, and the man is waiting for uh, someone to help him get in the pool, and all of a sudden, uh, he's, Jesus asks the man, do you want to get well? Now, hold on. He'd been there 38 years at a pool hoping for someone to help him get in when the angel troubles the water because he's hoping to get healed. But Jesus says, I know what your issue is. You've been here so long. You've been in this cycle so long that you've gotten caught up in the cycle. And so you just are now a prisoner of self-pity. And as a prisoner of self-pity, you are in the right place, but you don't want the right thing because your pity causes you to to get in the way of the healing that you can have. And so Jesus says, until we deal with, do you want to get well? You're not going to get well. I got to stop right here because somebody's looking at me right now. I don't know you, but God has you in the house or online. And the question Jesus is raising is, do you want to get well? The question being raised right now, do you really want the cycle to be broken? Do you really want to raise the bar and move beyond where you've been to where God is trying to take you. Do you want to get well? Wait, I'm not done. Jesus tells a parable about a prodigal son. Y'all know what happened. The prodigal son got his dad's resources left and the book says while he's in the far country, he's lost everything and the book says this, he came to himself and once he came to himself, I know what's wrong. I'm here in this far country hanging out with pigs and I am the son of a father and my father has a whole lot of money but here I am hanging out with pigs he came to himself I think I'll stop right there maybe your diagnosis is it's time to come to yourself because as long as you are not yourself you will find yourself kicking it with pigs as long as you are not yourself you will find yourself where you should not be but the book lets us know he came to himself and when he came to himself he recognized whose he was and once he knew whose he was it redefined who he was I think that's a way to break the cycle and that is to remember whose you are that informs who you are and that will cause you to get up and leave the pigs I still didn't get you there's another diagnosis. I think it's Acts chapter 3. In Acts chapter 3, the book lets us know, I love it, that Peter and John at the hour of prayer are going up for worship and to pray. And the book lets us know at the beautiful gate, there's a lame man who's been lame from his mother's womb 40 years. And the Bible says every day, watch the cycle. He's brought to the beautiful gate to ask alms. So he's been in a cycle of being brought to the gate, asking for alms, going home to wake up in the next morning and go to the beautiful gate, ask for alms, and then go back home to wake up the next morning to go to the beautiful gate to ask for alms. But this day, 40 years in, here comes Peter and John. And when Peter and John see him, they look at him. And then they say, look on us. And the text says he looked at them expecting to receive money from them. And Peter said, I ain't got no money, but I got a miracle. Your expectation 
expectations are too low. All you want is some money, but I got a Messiah. All you want is some silver. I've got a Savior. All you want is some gold. I've got some grace. Your expectations are down here when they need to be up here. Silver and gold, I ain't got, but I do have a name. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. Raise your expectations. Come here. If you're going to break the cycle and raise the bar, you got to raise your expectations. Yes, your cycle has kept you in the position that you're in for a long time, but don't let that define where you can go. Raise your expectations in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. I got to quit. Here's one more. And that is, I love this piece, Toshi, and that is the text lets us know after uh, the divine intervention and the diagnosis of what's really going on, text says this, I love it, the Lord said you've been circling or going around in circles long enough, go north. Okay, all right, all right. I, I, you, you need new directions. You, you need new directions. You, you need to go north. North is up. You need to go north. Here's what's interesting. What's interesting is that later on we discover that they had been going around in circles until a generation of disbelievers died off. This is the generation, watch this, that survived those who were disbelievers. This is the generation, watch this, that shared relationships that were dysfunctional. Okay, all right, okay. All right, well, I didn't come through, so, so I'm going to do this right quick and then see if I can get you because the text says it. I'm not making this up. The text says it. I'm not making it up. The text says go north, go north. And then later on, we find that some folk have died uh, because, uh, okay, 40th anniversary of hip hop, got to quote Meg the Stallion. Meg, help us out right now. Meg says, just as a snake sheds its skin, we must shed our past over and over again. Uh, that didn't get y'all. That didn't get y'all. Uh, uh, life is about shedding. Shedding, watch this. I love what Meg is doing. Meg is basically saying uh, growth takes place when you shed. You know you ain't growing if you got the same stuff the same people, you got the same, 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 and as a consequence of the same old, same old that you never shared, you're not growing. You only shared when you are growing. I'm still not coming through. Uh, uh, I did not know this. Y'all from Florida, you know this, and, and, and there, that Florida, of course, has a lot of hurricanes. Some trees survive hurricanes because they are flexible. And so here comes the wind, and they bend, but they don't break because they are flexible. There are other trees, watch this, that are labeled, watch this, gumbo limbo trees. I never heard of this. Gumbo limbo trees. You know what gumbo limbo trees do? Gumbo limbo trees, when they sense a hurricane is coming, they start shedding or breaking off branches that will get in the way when the storm comes. And so what they do, the branches start getting weak and they fall off the trunk of the tree. So this way when the hurricane winds begin to blow, the branches are no longer in the way. What the junk gumbo limbo tree, ain't that a trip gumbo? Ain't Louisiana, it's Florida, but it's gumbo limbo trees that basically, look it up, y'all not, y'all sitting there looking all strange. They say a hurricane is on the way and the only way I'm going to survive the hurricane, I got to let go of all of these branches, all of this stuff that's going to get in the way of me becoming and surviving this storm. God is talking to somebody. What branches do you need to let go of to survive what's going to take place in 2024? Let me close. Let me close. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, let me close by testifying. This, this happened, uh, as you know, I do a lot of revivals, and I was doing a revival in another city, uh, and I won't call the name of the city because some of y'all know the pastor, and I'm not trying to embarrass him. Uh, the pastor, good friend, wonderful person, and a few years ago, he has, uh, instead of a car service, he has one of his deacons to pick me up in the church van uh, from the airport. So I get picked up in the church van at the airport. Now, I'm, I'm trying not to be, you know, snooty and stuff. I, I can ride in a church van. That's fine. So, so I get picked up in the church van, and, and, and that wasn't even the worst thing. The worst thing is I got picked up by, by, by this deacon who loves me to this day, loves me to this day, but this deacon's best driving years are way behind. I mean, I mean his, his best driving years. And, and I tell you, he loves me a whole lot because a lot of times he'll be driving, he's real quiet, doesn't say anything, and sometimes we'll get to a stoplight and he'll just look at me. Just look at me real, real, but I know he loves me, so I, I, I don't trip when he does that. But, but a few years ago, he picked me up in the church van and then did the revival. Revival comes to an end. When revival came to an end, Deb, here's what happened. Uh, he takes me to the airport, and he picked me up real early because his best driving years are like 15 years ago. And, 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 and he really shouldn't be driving, but he's driving in this huge city. It's a huge city, notorious for traffic. And so he picked me up like two and a half hours before my flight, which I don't like, but because of how he drives, I did not complain. And so he picks me up. And, and so I'm just, just basically enjoying the ride in the church van. And I start noticing that, that we're at in the air, airport environs, but we're not going into the airport. We, we, we keep going uh, around and then we we exit and then get back on the freeway and, and we go by the airport and, and so it happened twice and uh, because I had left so early, I wasn't tripping, but the third time was when this had my attention. I said, are we okay? He said, he said this, he said, I'm not like, he, make this up, he, I, I didn't make this up, he said, I'm just a little confused, but, but I'm going to get you there, I'm going to find this exit, uh, I'm going to get you there. And so when he said he's confused, I said, uh-uh, no, 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 uh-uh, uh, no, no, I can't have no confusion, I got a flight to catch, I got to get home, I got to go somewhere. And y'all, when he said he's confused, and then we did it one more time, I said, all right, enough confusion, here's what we're going to do, we're on the freeway. Way. This happened. We're on the freeway. I said, stop right now. Just stop. Pull over to the side of the freeway. I'm getting out right now. He said, Rev, that's crazy. I'm, I said, I'm crazy. I'm not going around another time. I'm getting out right now. If you hadn't heard I'm crazy, you better ask somebody. Ask my members. They'll tell you. I'm crazy. Stop right now. Pull over to the side of the freeway and let me out right now. Y'all, he pulled over to the side of the freeway. I grabbed my bags and like a squirrel trying to cross the street I began to dot across the freeway with my luggage I got out watch this I finally I hopped over the fence literally hopped over the fence I then carried my luggage up the ramp until I got to American Airlines I then was able to make my flight the flight takes off while I'm in air I'm about to write in my prayer journal I'm writing in my prayer journal journal and the Holy Spirit says this to me. The Holy Spirit said you had to get out in order to take off. I'm done. But that's what God told me to tell somebody because listen, I was basically going around in circles with somebody that was confused and once I saw they were confused, I had to make up my mind either I'm going to get out of confusion if I'm going to take off. That's what my word is for somebody who's find themselves. It's the end of 23. You want more in 24 if you're going to break the cycle. There's some stuff you got to say, I'm getting out so I can take off. And if you get out, God will bless you to take off. Is there anybody here who is ready to get out so you can take off? Get out of dysfunction and take off. Get out of relationships that are toxic so you can take off. Get out of anything that is holding you back and keeping you down. It's time to take off, but you can't take off unless you
you have the courage to get out. Let's pray. God, we thank you and praise you. The fact that you still speak. And when you speak, you dare challenge us to break cycles so we can raise the bar. God, right now, I stand in the gap and pray for each and every one of your children, especially do I pray, oh God, for those who've been caught up in cycles, cycles of addiction. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, break addiction cycles. Cycles of dysfunctional and toxic relationships. In the name of Jesus, break dysfunctional relationship cycles. Oh God, may this be the last circle that they go in. As a matter of fact, may this be the last time that someone hits or hurts them. Break cycles, even right now. Break dead-end job cycles. And God, in the name of Jesus Christ, this night, may your children surrender to a calling that's bigger than themselves. May they, oh God, not only hear from you, but as they hear from you, may they surrender to the purpose you've assigned their lives. In the name of Jesus, may they surrender to their calling. And then, God, I pray that you will break cycles, family cycles, as a result of trauma from the past, break cycles. But God, we're not settling for broken cycles. We want to raise the bar. We want to raise our expectations. We want to believe you for more in 24. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, go ahead, raise the bar. May we forget the things that are behind press toward the mark for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. God, don't let us settle for what we've had. May we, oh God, believe you for more and more as we move forward into a new year. And now, God, save the lost. Bring home to your church those who have no church home. Tonight, I pray for someone to shed old skin. I pray for someone to shed branches. I pray for someone to get out so they can take off. In Jesus' name, save the lost. In Jesus' name, bring home to your church community those, oh God, who don't have that kind of connection. Move with power, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Listen, as Christians continue to pray, if you're watching online, Call us at 469-498-0210. Tonight, this night, ending 23, you can literally get out so you can take off. Get out of those sinful situations. Get out. It's time to take off and go to your destination. So dial that number 469-498-0210 or email us at join us at friendshipwest.org. But whatever else you do, get out and take off. Well, what about you in the house? Here you are in church. It ain't an accident. God planned it. God wants you to take off, but you can't take off until you get out. And so here you are in church. It ain't an accident. God planned it. God bless your heart. If you're here and you know you want to get out and give your life to Christ, get out and be saved. Get out and connect with Jesus. Connect with your creator. Connect with the God who made you. Find out what your calling is. Listen, if you want to know what you were made for, you better connect with your maker. God says it's time to get out so you can take off. And so if you're here and you're not saved, here's what you do. Do what my brother is done. Stand up. Step out of the aisle you're in. Come on down front and give your life to Christ. Break the cycle and raise the bar. Break the cycle of getting in your own way and raise the bar. Break the cycle. It's time to break the cycle. It's time to get out so you can take off. If you're here and you're not saved, you're here. 
and you know you're not in right relationship with God through Jesus Christ. That's all I'm saying. Here's what you do. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. You're here, and you know good and well. You don't have that connection with God. Here's what you do. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. Join church. Listen, don't move into the new year with the same old habits. Get out and take off. Preacher, well, here's my deal. I got that part right. But what I want to do is join church. God bless your heart, bro. God bless you. God bless you. I got that part right. I feel God leading me to join this church. I'd like to be a part of this faith community. If that's you, stand up, step out, come on down. I see y'all. Bless your heart. Come on. Come on. Preacher, here's my deal. I just moved to Dallas, Fort Worth from another area. I got a church home back there, but now I live here, work here, go to school here. I'd like to join church here. Listen, we'd love to have you. Stand up, step out, come on down, and let's join church. Preacher, here is my deal. I used to go to church. I stopped going, but I'm ready to get back in church. If that's you, stand up, step out, come on down, and let's get back in church. Preacher, I'm feeling God leading me to join church. I want to do it right now. Here it is. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ. Join church. Tonight's a mighty good night. Last night of the year. Let's get out and take off. Give your life to Christ. Listen, we're getting ready to stand. When we stand, the music ministry is going to bless us. And when we stand, that's your signal. Stand up. Step out. Come on down. Give your life to Christ and join church. Shall we stand and won't you come right now? Come on. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you don't give up on God cause he won't give up on you he's able yeah, yeah. everybody say he's able oh, 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 oh. stay right there we say God is God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, because he won't give up on you. We say, he's able. Oh, everybody in the
Listen, you're still out there, and I know you are. I feel spirit speaking. Spirit won't let me quit the invitation because of you, and you know who you are. God is speaking, and you wrestling. You're going back and forth. I get that. I get that. You got all these excuses in your mind as to why you shouldn't do it tonight. And I get that because the devil, the Bible says, disguises himself as an angel of light. The devil is just lying to you, giving you every excuse as to why you ought not get out and take off. The devil is giving you every excuse to keep you from what God has for you. But also God is speaking. So you're basically wrestling with God too. And if you're wrestling with God, make sure you lose because that's the only way you're going to really win. And so I'm going to ask Myron to do that one more time. When he does that one more time, that's going to be your signal to go ahead and say, yes, Lord. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. Somebody else. Somebody else. Come on. Come on. Myron's going to sing that thing one more time. God is able. Don't you give up on God. God has not given up on you. That's why you're still breathing. That's why you're still here. So come on down. Give your life to Christ. Join church. He's able. Everybody say, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up. One more time, say, don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Yeah, if you know he's able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory, glory. Father, we thank you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh. Oh. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise God for our wonderful new family members. Welcome home. Welcome home. Glad to have y'all. Yes, glad to have y'all. Hallelujah. God is able. Let me pray. God, thank you for new life in Christ. Thank you that we close an old year, move into a new year with new life in Christ, new life in community. I pray your blessings upon these, your children. God, please fill them with your Holy Spirit. Order their lives in your word. Bless them in a very special way. To not only get out, but to experience a year where they take off exceedingly abundantly above all they can ask or imagine according to the power at work within them. Use us as their family to connect with them, love on them, and help them to become all that you would have them to. Thank you now for what you've done and what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy New Year. Listen, please go with our discipleship ministry, ministers of the gospel. They're going to minister to you in a private area. Y'all, would you welcome our new family? Welcome them home. Welcome them home. Welcome them home. Why at it? Would y'all thank God with me one more time for Myron Butler? Myron Butler, you are gifted, man. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you blessed us powerfully. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Listen, uh, it's offering time, huh? Yeah, it's offering time. It's offering time. 
please, please, before we go, I'm going to ask you to prepare a special offering. I'm going to do a prayer for us as we go, a prayer to end the year, move into a new year. But I'm asking you right now to give a generous love offering at this time of love to our great God who loves you enough to give to you and take care of you. Welcome, man. Glad to have you, bro. God bless you. Uh, give that jacket away, okay, because I don't want you to do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but very seriously, uh, please prepare to give generously and lovingly now. The Bible says bring the whole tithe into God's storehouse. Also, here's the beautiful thing about giving, and that is this is the last night of 2023. You can not only get blessings from God, but God can use your charitable contribution. This is a 501c3 nonprofit. That means that guess what? When you're doing your taxes uh, next year, your gifts here will count for you. So please make sure uh, that you handle up on that and then watch God do what only God can do because the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And then watch this. God uses your gifts through the ministry of this church to do so many impactful things that impact community, change and transform lives. It happens because of your generosity. And so please help us to do even more as we move forward. So prepare now to give generously and lovingly, and then I'm gonna give you a couple of announcements, and then I wanna cover you in prayer. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for the gift of giving. Receive these gifts as expressions of our love for you, obedience to your word, and even our sacrifice, because we believe in your cause. Use these gifts to save souls, transform lives, impact community, and turn this world upside down. In Jesus' name, amen. A few things, we'll get ready to go. Tosha Story, please stand. We're so glad to have Tosha Story in the house. Tosha, if you watch Days of Our Lives, The Oval, no, I'm, ooh, I messed up. Young and the Restless, Young and the Restless, Young and the Restless. That's right. Matter of fact, she was nominated for an Emmy for her role, her recurring role on Young and the Restless. Nominated for an Emmy and uh, for many years a member of Friendship West. Then she moved out to Hollywood. She and her son Jordan. Jordan uh, stars in Bel Air. Bel Air. Yeah. And she plays his mama. Y'all didn't get that. She's his mama in real life and gets paid to be his mama on TV. All right. Now, I just want to share this. The reason I'm having her stand is because her testimony, I hope you write a book. She moved to Hollywood. I, I never forget. She moved to Hollywood. She's a member of this church. And so she told me she was moving to L.A. And so uh, I said, all right. And so she moves to L.A., but she's a single parent. And she says, I got to feed my child. And so even though she moved out there with Hollywood dreams, she postponed her dreams in order to get a job to feed her son, send her son to the best schools and all of that. She does all of this, putting her stuff on hold. And then, I won't forget this as long as I stay black. We're talking, we're having a conversation, and she says, Pastor, I'm getting ready to quit my job and go full-time with acting. I said, mm -mm, no, no, no. Quit your job, your job pays you. That's how you eat and pay your bills. She said, she said, Pastor, haven't you ever heard of faith? <laughs> Ain't that a trip? This nigga gonna tell me about faith. And she said, haven't you heard about faith? And y'all, she quit her job after Jordan had finished. He went to USC or UCLA? USC, he went to USC. She put him through USC. And then says, I'm quitting my, it's my turn. And y'all, when she quit her job, doors started opening. And so now she has been, you're going to get an Emmy, okay? Been not, what you going to tell me? Huh? The Oval. You're on the Oval. I didn't say the Oval. What did I say? Okay, the Oval and Young and the Restless. All right, Young and the Restless, all right. And who? 
Young and Restless and the Oval. So y'all watch her on the, on, on the Oval, okay? She plays this real crazy woman on the Oval, okay? And so, uh, 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 and you do a good job acting, too. You do a good job. <laughs> All right, very seriously, I thank God for her. And she also is, comes back home and she teaches courses. So I'm very proud of you. Just want to say thank God for you, Tosha. God bless you. <clears throat> now, there's a huge musical that Al Wash is putting on coming March 1st. It's going to be Yolanda Adams, Hezekiah Walker, and Marvin Sapp in one place right here at Friendship West. So make sure uh, we support it because it's Al Wash, our member, who is doing it, and we want to do big things. Where's Maxie? Maxie, Pastor Maxie, please stand. Pastor Maxie is pastor. And he also is on the school board of Dallas Independent School District. And he can play, he can play that saxophone. God bless you, man. Thank you for being with us tonight. And we're so glad to have you. All right. Anything else? Anything else? All right. I want to cover you in prayer as we get ready to go, okay? Because I want, I, I, want, I want you to have more in 24. We're going to raise the bar, okay? It's your year. We're going to believe that, pray for that and watch God make it happen. Let's go to God in prayer. However your prayer posture is, feel free to do that right now. Whatever your prayer posture is, feel free to do that. I want to cover you in prayer as we get ready to move into a new year. Oh God, how we thank you and praise you for keeping us. Matter of fact, you're a keeper. You've kept us throughout this year and not just this year, but every year. And our testimony is for every mountain you brought us over, for every trial you've seen us through, for every blessing, hallelujah, God, we give you praise. So we give, us, we give you praise for what you brought us through. We give you praise for keeping us. We give you praise for watching over us. We give you praise for taking such good care of us. God, we give you praise for being faithful. Thank you for being so faithful that you come through when we're going through. You're so faithful that you, oh God, know what's best for us and you do it even when we don't know what's best for us. And so for that, we thank you and praise you. And now, God, we thank you and praise you not only for what you've seen us through and how you've kept us in the past, but now, oh God, as we get ready for a new year, we thank you for what's next. We thank you for what's ahead. We thank you for an opportunity to raise the bar. And so right now, I pray that you again would break old cycles, that you again, oh God, would remove anything in our lives that's not like you. And not only remove all stuff that ain't like you, but in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, oh God, that you will give us the strength to move forward into a new year. And oh God, may we not settle for less next year, but May we expect more and do more in 24. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, I believe you that you, oh God, are going to not only keep us next year, but you're going to elevate. You're going to promote. You're going to open doors. You're going to make a way. You're going to do exceedingly abundantly above anything we can ask or imagine according to the power that's at work within us. So God, you go ahead and have your way. God, you go ahead and do a new thing. God, you go ahead and have your way in such a way that the only explanation that we will have next year at this time for what took place in 24 is that you did it. So go ahead, God. Do what you do. Go ahead, God. Have your way. Go ahead, God. Bless us, and we shall be blessed. And 
now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause God's face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance upon you and grant you peace. Go now in the power of God's Holy Spirit, breaking cycles, raising the bar. You're going to get more and do more in 24. In Jesus' name, amen and hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. Love you much. We praise God for this impactful experience and for your joining us during it. Check us out on social media and please like, share, and subscribe at Friendship West. Then go to www.friendshipwest.org to find out more about this marvelous movement. Find out how to participate through sharing your prayers, sharing your offerings or monetary gifts, or sharing and investing your time volunteering with this difference-making ministry. For you who are viewing as visitors, you can share that you are here by taking time to text FWBIZ to the number 28950. For those who want to, this time that you are visiting to be the last time that you are a visitor, you can become part of our fabulous family of faith, either by calling 469-498-0210 or by emailing join us at friendshipwest.org with your first name your last name, and your cell number. Either way, we look forward to hearing from you. We're so excited that you are here. Until next time, blessings on you.